Let's talk about my engine room hatches. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. Welcome to the Boatworks. The boat behind me is a 1986 Alban 27 family cruiser. We call it a pocket trawler because it's a small trawler that can be launched and trailered by the do-it-yourself owner. I've been restoring this boat for about eight years, and in the last 12 months, things have started to pick up pace. I started the YouTube channel so that I could document all the projects that I'm doing on my boat and to provide motivation and a little bit of information for other people who are working on their do-it-yourself boat building and boat restoration projects. The boat behind me is completely empty. It's a bare hull. There's nothing inside of it. I've stripped it down and now I'm rebuilding it, putting everything back together just the way I like it. And I'll be using it for some long-term cruising in my retirement. If you've been watching the channel, you know that I've been racing towards completing phase one of this boat restoration. Phase one is what I call all the dirty work on this boat project. It's things like modifying the hull, sanding, a little bit of painting, all sorts of grinding. Anything that involves fiberglass or composite boat building, well, that's the dirty work. Phase two will be where I begin to install all of the systems and components in the boat. The electrical, the plumbing, new navigation, and a new propulsion system. I'll be permanently installing and finishing the interior cabins and also the galley of the boat. Phase three will be all the finishing and the sea trials. It'll be where I kind of tweak everything and make sure that it's just the way I like it for my long-term cruising plans. This episode, I'm going to be talking about my engine room hatches. All right, let's talk about the engine room of the Alban 27. The engine room is one of the most important places on this boat. Why? Because it's a power boat, right? The engine room on the Alban 27 is a compartment that's about five feet by five feet and about three and a half feet deep. It's located amidships on the boat between the forward cabin and the aft cabin in the cockpit area. The compartment is actually below the cockpit deck and to access it, there are two large engine room hatches that you can open up and then you can climb down into the engine compartment and access the engine and work on the system. The engine compartment contains, of course, the inboard diesel engine, the freshwater tanks, the blackwater tanks, the batteries, and some other major system components. One of the things I like about the Alban 27 is that this engine compartment is relatively large and it makes it really easy to access most of the systems and in particular to work on the engine. I actually started working on the engine room hatches several years ago, back before I had the boat works, and I was just working on the boat in my backyard. The reason I started working on the hatches was because it made sense to try and begin to finish out the cockpit while I was doing the non-skid on the rest of the boat. The cockpit area of the Alban 27 is really quite large, so I applied a non-skid pattern all throughout the cockpit, and that included the engine room hatches. If you're new to the channel and you haven't been watching all the episodes, be sure to check out the episode where I talk about applying non-skid to the deck of my boat. It'll explain the product that I used. It's called soft sand, and I really think it's just a great material. Motor City Boat Works has no sponsors, and I get no compensation from any of the companies or the products that I sometimes mention on my channel. However, in the description, I sometimes put links for Amazon where you can find some of the tools or items that I'm using in the restoration of my boat. Amazon does provide a small commission if you use those links. Now on a diesel cruiser such as the Alban 27, the inboard diesel engine, it can be quite loud when you're underway, right? The engine noise is kind of loud. So one of the things that you do is people put sound deadening material on the underside of the deck or on the engine room hatches to prevent loud noise. 
And in my case, the material I decided to use was a product called Sounddown. Sounddown is a company, they make acoustic deadening material. In this case, it's a piece of lead with some foam and then some temperature rated foil covering that goes over the material. It's about two, two and a half inches thick and it's mounted to the underside of the engine room hatches. Sound down is very well regarded in the sailing cruising community. It's often used in sailboat engine compartments. To install the sound down, well first you have to remove the engine room hatches. You have to clean off any old material that was there, get down to a nice fresh new surface. Next you install anchor points. These are like pins with bases that have to be epoxied in place. A trick is to reinforce any place where an anchor point might poke through the foam material. You don't want the mylar covering to tear at any point. It's important that the foam stay completely sealed and protected from moisture and dirt, bugs, and other stuff. It's a relatively simple process to install this stuff. It's just a couple of steps that you kind of have to follow. The end result, if you install this properly, is the material should look like the surface on the inside of a spaceship. While this material works really well, it is kind of expensive. The only downside to sound down is the cost. This material costs about $350 for a six foot long section, so it can be kind of expensive. Throughout the rest of the engine room, I'm gonna come up with my own sound deadening material, something that will be very easy to clean, but also hopefully reduce some of the noise throughout the rest of the boat. Now I know what you're thinking. This all sounds great, but let me tell you, it brings up a very important teaching point. This lesson is about the forgotten rule of boat restoration. Now you've probably seen my episode where I talk about the 10 rules of amateur boat restoration. Check it out. But I gotta be honest with you, I forgot one of the rules. We'll call it rule number 11. Don't do your boat projects out of order. Today in the boat shop, we're going to be working on a new project. We're going to be working on the engine room compartment. We've got an annoying situation. This is something I have been meaning to fix for years, but I never quite got around to it. It took me a while to kind of figure out what were going to be the steps to, to getting this done right. First, let's pull up the floor protection and I'll show you what the deal is. Let's get this back here. Behind these doors here is the engine room compartment. And what I wanna show you is that, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of flex when you step on the compartment doors. And this is caused by a failure in the edge of the engine room compartment for the hatch. Let me show you. We've got two issues that we gotta deal with. The first issue we have to deal with is, a number of years ago, I took off the engine room hatches. And the reason I did this was to go ahead and clean them up and get ready to install the non-skid. All the non-skid for the boat was being installed and it seemed like a good time. When I took off the engine room hatches, I also went ahead and installed some soundproofing material. Hopefully this would kind of keep the noise of the new diesel engine down to a minimum when you're at the helm or you're relaxing in the cockpit of the boat. It's not cheap, but it is a quality product. I installed it on the underside of the engine room hatches now five six years later well we've got a problem this is what the underside of the hatch looks like here it's a nice beefy two inches of protective sound deadening material here a combination of foam and lead and whatever they make up uh, their material out of but the issue is is that when I installed it and over time, it tore at the anchor points. And particularly along the edge, and particularly along the edge here, so that when I washed the boat, well, this area absorbed water. And you can see. Water. 
It only happened on one of the hatches, the one that was closest to the port side. This is because when I took the boat out of storage and I gave it a good power washing and scrubbing clean, well, water collected inside the cockpit as it drained to the bilge and it got inside the channel for the engine room hatches, the lip there, and water got absorbed into the foam. So now the foam on the port side engine room hatch, of course, is ruined. And I need to pull that off, redo it, and then reinstall that hatch. It's a simple problem, but it's redoing work and it just costs money. The second issue I have to deal with is the hatches for the engine room compartment, they're flexing slightly when I step on them. This is because the molded lip that the engine hatches rest in, well, it's cracked in one place. This is due to age or probably from someone dropping the heavy hatches down, letting them slam shut. Part of the lip has cracked and broken. And of course, the fiberglass is weakened. So now every time you step on the hatches, well, they flex a little bit and it's really not the way it's supposed to be. This should be an easy fix if I can get in there and reinforce the lip from the underside using epoxy and fiberglass cloth. So here you can see the issue right here. <laughs> There's a crack along the lip here. This is a channel that the hatches rest inside of. And due to the hatches slamming shut, it broke here and it caused it to crack. So I've got to reinforce this. But the issue with reinforcing it is Someone already beat me to it, and they tried to do some type of bodge job repair. I have no idea what this material is. I'm guessing it's probably some sort of marine text, some type of epoxy putty that someone tried to shove up inside there. But of course, it really didn't do anything, and it definitely hasn't solved the problem. I've got to get all this out of here first, open the channel back up, in order to get in there and lay fiberglass cloth properly and reinforce all of this edge. In fact, this might have been what caused the sound down to tear initially. And then as the foam of the sound down absorbed water, additional parts of the Mylar film failed. What a mess. Now I've got to figure out how to get this compound out of the way so that I can begin a proper fiberglass repair. You know it, this is going to be a job for the snake. <laughs> So we got that off there, what a complete mess. There's dust everywhere. Here's, seen, here's the deal, check it out. So we've ground this down here. And what we've gotta do is, kinda somehow glue this in there. We got another one over here we gotta do. We got a crack right here. So this is what I pulled out of from underneath there, from the channel of the uh, engine room uh, uh, hatches. Uh, you can take a look. I, I don't know what this is. It must be some sort of uh, marine text or some type of uh, epoxy paste, like a two-part epoxy paste that somebody mixed up and put in there. But, uh, of course, it wasn't spread properly and not fared in. And so there's no strength on anything. It really was just a bodge job, didn't do anything. So... Uh, this, uh, we got it out. So doing a new fiberglass, uh, repair with cloth and everything that should really make a difference. This is what it looks like. Take a look. It's hard. It's like some sort of epoxy. I, my thought is this is some type of marine text of some sort. I would think, uh, you can see how it picked up the print of the fiberglass uh, rough fiberglass from the lip but they didn't put it in there they just took their hand and they literally put it in there stuffed it up in there like that you can see the fingerprints <laughs> the grooves for the fingers like this like just like that 
Yeah. That is not the way you do a fiberglass repair. <laughs> but no problem, we'll fix it. We'll get it better than new, just watch. This is a typical fiberglass repair for structural cracks on an old boat. We'll use successive layers of fiberglass cloth on the backside of the crack and some thickened epoxy. This way we can kind of fill in the crack but reinforce it from the back side. And then once it's all cured, we'll come back with the snake. We'll grind down any meat hooks and ensure everything's smooth. It can be repainted and the repair will be complete. This is the underside of the hatch here. You can see where the anchor points are and you can see also that the material tore over time. It actually started on the side over here and this is what created the moisture wicking inside here, but other areas also broke down over time. It's, it's no fault of the material. It had to do with my very poor installation. So now we've got to remove these anchor point caps and try and try and put in some new pull out the old and put in some new material none of this would have happened if i had only dealt with the crack in the fiberglass early on when i found it because i waited till later well it ended up damaging the soundproofing that I put on the underside of the hatches. And frankly, I, I shouldn't have even done that project because there was no point putting in soundproofing, you know, six years before I ever bothered to start working on the engine compartment or even finding an engine. It just makes no sense. You've got to follow some sort of logical progression when you're doing your projects. And you've got to remember that if you do a project too early, well, you risk having it damaged or having to redo it later on uh, you just got to use your head and i wasn't thinking properly but luck has it we've got some good fortune it turns out i was able to remove the sound down material from the underside of the hatch the one that had all the water in it i let it sit out and it's begun to start drying the water is slowly evaporating away and i've gone ahead and purchased some aluminum type of tape like you use for HVAC. It's high temperature rated and I'll be able to repair the Mylon cover for the sound down material and actually reinforce it in a number of places so we don't have the issue of it tearing again in the future. I'll reinforce this entire sound down panel and I'll reinstall it on the bottom side of the engine room hatch and we'll be on our way. I wish I had a moment of completion to show you but I've decided to let the foam air out and really dry over a period of time. While I'm at it, I think I'm gonna go ahead and paint the engine room and ensure that everything is ready for the next stages of this restoration. I wanna thank you for stopping by the Boat Works. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. Motor City Boat Works is now on Patreon. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider supporting the channel. My commitment to you is that every dollar from every Patreon will go solely towards doing stories on real amateur boat building, real amateur boat restoration, and stories of boat motivation. These episodes would not be possible without your support. Thank you. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.